I'm Sam Luca, the 2020 Interpretive Naturalist Intern at the Adirondack Interpretive Center this 2020 summer season. In this installment of the Newcomb Naturalist Notes, we will be looking at the history of logging in the Rich Lake area. Easily visible from the trails at the AIC are two different artifacts from the 1800s, a boom chain and the remnants of a splash dam. These relics are from an era when timber was floated on the Hudson River and its tributaries to sawmills downriver in what is known as a log drive or river drive. Timber was cut in the summer, peeled of its bark, and then hauled onto the frozen lake in winter. When the snow and ice melted and the spring water levels were high enough, the river drive commenced. Splash dams were constructed to raise the water levels on lakes, streams, and ponds in order to maximize the number of logs that could be floated downstream. Benson Lossing, an author and adventure seeker of the mid-19th century, mentioned seeing ruins of a splash dam on Rich Lake in his 1866 book. This dam was rebuilt shortly thereafter on or near the original dam site. You can see the remnants of this dam from our trail system. If you have walked across our Rich Lake Trail, you may have noticed a large chain wrapped around a cedar tree on the shore of the lake. This is likely an old chain that belonged to a logging boom. Log booms were barriers placed across the water so that logs could be contained and the release of them controlled. This old chain on Rich Lake is likely from a trip boom. When the splash dams were opened in the spring and there was enough water to cover the rocks at the bottom of the dam, the trip boom would open and logs were free to move over the dam down to the next section of the river. It might take several trips until all of the logs were flushed from the lake down into the Hudson. It was a highly choreographed operation to open the splash dams in a sequence that took advantage of the large head of water moving downriver. It was 90 river miles from the Rich Lake Dam to Glen Falls, and with logs traveling about two miles per hour, the trip to the mill could take two seasons to accomplish. Depending on the amount of logs, the winter snowpack, and the spring rain, log drive season lasted from two to three months. During the time of this logging activity in the Adirondacks, softwoods were clear-cut, but hardwood areas remained relatively untouched. Why? Because softwoods floated, hardwoods would sink and were too heavy for log drives. This softwood timber was moving down the Hudson River all the way to Albany as early as 1758. But at that time, rafts of logs were tied together and floated down the river. It wasn't until 1813 when the Fox Brothers floated their first individual logs down the Shroon River that the log drive era began. In 1849, the Glens Falls Big Boom was constructed four miles upriver from the falls. Logs would be released from the Big Boom to sorting areas for various sawmills. In order to sort the logs so that they went to the appropriate mill, stamps were placed on the butt end of each log before it was sent downriver. Each stamp corresponded to a mill or logging operation. There were at least 21 different stamps used on the Upper Hudson. You can see the Finch Prine stamp on this log that was pulled from Rich Lake. 1872 was the peak of log driving in this region with 18 different logging companies active in the Adirondacks. It is estimated that 2 million logs went downstream that spring season. The most intensive logging of the Rich Lake drainage occurred in 1883. By 1950, Finch Prine paper was the only operation still using the Hudson to transport four-foot paper pulp logs to its mills in Glen Falls. It is believed that the last use of the splash dam on Rich Lake was by Finch Prine in the 1930s. Now instead of logs, recreationalists float on the waters of Rich Lake. Thanks for tuning in! If you're interested in logging and how this important Adirondack industry has changed over the years, be sure to visit the Adirondack Experience in Blue Mountain Lake, where they have an entire building dedicated to the subject. Check us out next week to discuss the dragonfly, a fascinating aquatic invertebrate. See you then!